everyone, Denika here from My Chemistry Hub. Today, I'll be discussing with you a past paper question from Cape Unit 2, Module 2, under the section entitled The Chemistry of Organic Compounds. So let me go in full view so you can see properly. So in figure one, we're shown some derivatives of benzene, and then we're asked to provide the reagents used in um, step one to five to achieve these derivatives. So in step one, we're going from methyl benzene to form one chloromethyl benzene. And in order to form this, since we're obviously adding chlorine, the first thing we know that we need is elemental chlorine, right? Which is chlorine gas. The second thing we need is energy. And now we're going to get our energy in the form of UV light. In step two, which is here, we're forming nitrobenzene from benzene. And in order to do this, we need something to provide our nitronium ion, which is our NO2 plus ion right here. And what we can use to um, produce this is um, a mixture of sulfuric acid, which is H2SO4, and nitric acid, which is HNO3. And these um, two acids together will produce our nitronium ion as shown here. And then seeing that our nitronium ion has this positive charge, you know that it is what we call an electrophile. And our benzene ring has these... Um, pi electrons here, and so benzene is a nucleophile. So we have this type of nucleophile attacking an electrophile, and we get our result in nitrobenzene. Now in step three, which is here, we're taking the nitrobenzene that we just formed, and we're forming aminobenzene from it, which is traditionally known as aniline, right? And in this process, we realize that we are substituting our two oxygen atoms for two hydrogen atoms. So we're losing oxygen and we're gaining hydrogen. Now I'm sure that sounds familiar to you because we know that reduction is the loss of oxygen and the gain of hydrogen. And in some cases, it's also the gain of electrons. But in this case, we're going to focus on the loss of oxygen and the gain of hydrogen. Now, since we said that this is a reduction process, then we need a reducing agent. And one such reducing agent that can be used here is tin in hydrochloric acid. Right, so let's now move on to part four. In part four, we're going from benzene to chlorobenzene. And in order to do this again, we're adding chlorine. So we need to add, ele we need elemental chlorine as a reagent. And in this case, we also need a catalyst. And the catalyst we're using here is um, ferric chloride. Now in the last step, which is step five, we're going to, we're going from phenyl to let's number our carbon atoms on this compound here. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we're going from phenol to two, four, six tribromophenol, which we have here. Now in order to do this, just by looking, we realize that we need bromine, right? Because we're adding bromine and so we must need bromine. So what happens is we could add cold liquid bromine which is this here. And so we have all our derivatives covered now. So let's go ahead and fill in our lines. So in part one, we say we're going from methyl benzene to one chloromethyl benzene. And in order to do this, we need chlorine and we need energy in the form of UV light. In part two, we are forming nitrobenzene from benzene. And we say in order to do that, we need our nitronium ion. And to form our nitronium ion, we need these two acids, sulfuric acid, and we also need nitric acid. In part three, we're taking this um, nitrobenzene that we formed in part two, and we are reducing it to form aminobenzene, and we say we need a reducing agent to do that, and we say that's tin in HCl, which is hydrochloric acid, be a good reducing agent for such a reaction. In part four, we're going from benzene to chlorobenzene. And we say that we need, again, we need elemental chlorine. Just chlorine two gas. Should have been, been adding in these tools. So, okay, because chlorine exists as a molecule, which is Cl2. So anyways, so in part four, as I said, we're going from benzene to chlorobenzene. So we need a chlorine. And we also need a catalyst in this case, which is ferric chloride, right? That's the one we'll use. And then in part five, we're going from phenol to 246 tribromophenol. And we said that bromine, liquid bromine, which is also 
a diatomic molecule, right? We need um, cold bromine in order to do this. So let's go back around here and also add or two here at the end of bromine. All right, so now we've covered um, question 1A. So now let us look at question 1B. And we have some derivatives again of benzene, and we're going to react each of these with chlorine and provide the structure that we would get if these um, derivatives indeed reacted with chlorine. So when we react benzene with chlorine, we know that we would get chlorobenzene because we just um, established that around in question one, part A. And if we should react methyl benzene with chlorine, we know that we would get one chloromethyl benzene in which one of the hydrogens in the methyl is simply substituted by a chlorine molecule. Now, what I want you to pay attention to is that um, in this case, they did not say excess chlorine, and so we can stop at one chloromethyl benzene. But if, for instance, we had excess chlorine, then we could actually go all the way to substituting all the hydrogens with chlorine atoms so that it becomes CCL3. But in this case, it's not excess, and so we just stop here at our one chloromethyl benzene. So here in part C, they're asking us to basically give reasons as to why the chlorine group is attaching the following positions in part B. So in part one, we have chlorobenzene, right? And what happens is that in the presence of a catalyst, which we saw in 1A, in part 1A, chlorine will react with benzene and substitute one of the hydrogens on the benzene ring. And that could happen at any pos any carbon position at the benzene ring from 1 to 6. In part 2, we see that the chlorine basically reacts with the methyl group in methyl benzene instead of reacting with the benzene ring itself. And the reason for this is that the reaction with the methyl group requires less energy than the reaction with the benzene ring itself. And since it's a lower energy process, as we realize that this only needed light in order to take place, while if the chlorine were to react with the benzene ring directly, then you would actually need the presence of a catalyst. That alone should tell you that the reaction with the methyl group and chlorine requires um, less energy and in, is hence more favorable or more likely to occur. Now, in the case of nitrobenzene, what you have is a meta-substituted product where the chlorine um, substitutes a hydrogen in the... Let me go in full screen here. Sorry about that. So the chlorine um, substitutes a hydrogen in the meta position, which is right here. And it, you realize that the chlorine did not go in the ortho, are the para positions and i'll explain the reason for that now the reason for that is that the resonance form of the meta substituted product is more stable than the resonance form the resonance forms of the para or or ortho substituted product so we're let's go through this mechanism so that you can see what i am talking about so here we have our nitrobenzene we have a nitronium ion and we know that it has a positive charge here and then we have a chlorine molecule in solution or wherever we have a chlorine molecule here and so we have a delta positive atom chlorine atom and a delta negative chlorine atom which means electron density is pulling more so to this chlorine atom so what happens is that the electrons the electron from the benzene ring attacks the delta positive chlorine atom and the chlorine chlorine bond breaks and what we get here is this um, new compound here our new resonance form so let's attach our chlorine in our meta position and we know that this carbon here also has a hydrogen attached right so because our carbon or our, sorry or electrons move from this position here then we now form a carbocation there where we have a positive center we still have our nitronium ion here right and what we, go, we can go ahead and draw different resonance forms of this so what happen is that these electrons from this double bond here will basically go here instead to satisfy the positive charge. So now we have here, we have here, 
we still have our chlorine and our hydrogen atom here. We have our nitronium ion up here as well. Oh, sorry, these should actually be just two lone pairs. So just these two, because one of those lone pairs would have been involved in the bonding in the second, in forming a second bond, so the double bond at the end. So there are two lone pairs there. Right. And now, because the electrons move from here, we now have the positive center here. And we know that we can form a third resonance for. where the electrons from here goes to satisfy the lack of electrons up here where the positive charge is. And then what happens is that we end up with a structure that looks like this. It's a CL, this is a H. We still have our nitronium ion. We still have our plus charge here. So what you find in, is that in the meta substituted um, compound, you don't have, you will never have the positive charge or the carbocation forming next to this positive charge in the nitronium group. And so the resonance form, the resonance forms are what you call stabilized resonance forms. Now in the case of para, Sometimes you will have, um, let me show you, one of the resonance forms. So in your spare time, of course, you can go ahead and you can draw out the mechanism and, you know, test this out for yourself, for yourselves. But in the power, what you would have here is that you would have the positive charge on the nitronium ion. And at one point, the carbocation would actually be right here. And our, of course, our chlorine would have been here instead since it's para. But these two um, positive charges being in such close contact would result in would result in destabilization. And in the ortho position, you also have one of these um, resonance forms. And I'll draw that one for you. And as well, you can, of course, go ahead and work it out in your spare time and, you know, try to figure it out and see what I'm talking about. Right, so see here you have this um, double bond. Um, so this sorry, you have this positive charge for your carbocation here. When your chlorine group is attached in the ortho position, right, and you know already that you have the positive charge on the nitronium ion. I know you have the carbocation right below, right, and the carbon that's attached to the nitronium ion. And so again, these two positive groups being so close together destabilizes the resonance form. And that's why for um, the chlorination of nitrobenzene, it will take place in the meta position and you'll form a single product and it will not, and it will not, but it will not take place in the ortho and the paro positions. Now the last question says that we should list the compounds benzene, methyl benzene and nitrobenzene in order of increasing reactivity. Now to have a better take at these questions, let us draw the structures of these three components. So of course, you know that that's benzene and we now need to have our methyl benzene. So we have here our methyl benzene. And lastly, we are to draw nitrobenzene. And it's asking us basically which is most reactive, which is least reactive and which is intermediately reactive. So let's first take a look at, since this benzene is unsubstituted, let's first take a look at our methyl benzene and our nitrobenzene. benzene. So we know that first thing, methyl is an alkyl group. And what we know about alkyl groups going in is that alkyl groups are electron donating. So they basically push electron density this way. They push electron density onto the benzene ring. Now, the higher the electron density on the benzene ring, the more reactive it becomes because it has more electrons excuse me, to participate in reactions, right? Because electrons are indeed what participate in reactions and form bonds and all those things. So the fact that this group is electron donating, it, it um, increases the overall reactivity of the, the benzene ring. 
Right, so now let's take a look at the nitro group. We know that nitro groups are elect what we call electron withdrawing, so it pulls electron density to itself, right? So there's less electron density on the benzene ring to react with other, com with other substances and form compounds and so on, and form bonds and those type of things. And so we find that nitrobenzene is actually the least reactive of all of these compounds. So we are to put them in increasing order. So nitrobenzene is less reactive than benzene, which is less reactive than methyl benzene. So that's it for our question today. I hope you learned something. And I hope that you practice what you learned today. And um, I hope you ask us questions. Feel free to ask us questions. Feel free to log in and learn new concepts week after week. And help um, just basically stay with us and, and let us see you um, to your success in your CAPE examinations. So until next time, do have a good week and take care.